In today's video, we're going over neuromobility techniques for peripheral neuropathies like cervical radicular pain and entrapment syndromes like carpal tunnel syndrome. Let's do it. So Jessen in 2020 showed that largely nerve mobility exercises were helpful for folks to have cervical radiculopathy, and Zahir in 2023 showed that neuromobility was helpful for folks with entrapment syndromes, syndromes specifically with carpal tunnel syndrome. What's kind of neat is that it seems like these neuromobilizations are helpful for pain as well as improving outcome, but in the carpal tunnel study, they also show that improved nerve conduction velocity, so a pretty cool objective measure you're improving with your exercise. So what the heck are neurodynamics or neuromobility? So generally speaking, nerves like space and like movement. And one of the things we're trying to accomplish with neurodynamics is giving them a little bit of space and providing some movement, right? A little anatomy about nerves first, so you can understand what we're about to do. Nerves attach from brain down to toes or brain down to the fingertips. We're gonna go over the upper extremity today, so we're focusing on brain to the fingers, right? If I wanna maximally stretch my nerves, let's say I'm gonna maximally stretch my median nerve, I can just straighten out my arm here, extend at the wrist and the fingers, depress the shoulder, and side bend away. And I can feel a big stretch going down my arm, and what I'm probably feeling is my median nerve, okay? And if I am stretching that nerve, that would be a neural stretch or a neural tensioner, okay? The problem with these stretches is that early on in rehab, folks oftentimes don't really tolerate a big stretch. But do keep in mind, if you stretch, that can be helpful for these patients. If you wanna to try to give them an intervention that's a little bit more tolerable, you can use what's called a glide or a slider. Sometimes you refer to as flossing. So essentially, if I do this, I'm stretching the median nerve all the way from brain to my fingertips. If I do this, I'm now slacking the nerve at my wrist, okay? If I do this, I'm also slacking at the neck. What I can do is I can slack at one area and I can tension at another. And then I can flip and I can go slack here and I can go tension there. What I'm doing in this scenario is I'm not stretching the nerve that sometimes nerves don't like if it's really irritated, but I am moving that nerve back and forth where it travels, providing a little bit of motion. Do keep in mind that both of these interventions are helpful for folks that have cervical radiculopathy. It's just that folks that have a very painful condition, sometimes they really don't like to be stretched, so just be cautioned with the application of exercises. We'll show you how to dose it though in this video. First, we're gonna go over some mobilizations, so both some stretches as well as some glides for the median nerve. So interventions for the median nerve are really helpful for folks that have cervical radiculopathy, but also for patients that have carpal tunnel syndrome because it's the same uh, nerve that's involved with that syndrome. So I'm gonna take the patient's arm, and then from here, I'm gonna the median nerve. So what I wanna try to do is point out this thumb, point out the fingers here. I'm depressing the shoulder. I'm going to abduct, externally rotate, extend from the fingertips. I'm gonna have you bend your head towards that side. Good, try not to rotate, try to just bend, right? So if I wanna stretch, I can very easily go from this position to this position and back and forth. If this is a little too much for your patient to handle, we can just take your head and bring it to neutral, right? Perform the same thing. And again, if this is still too much, I can bring the head and bring it back over a little bit more so. So we're just slacking the nerve more and more from the neck, right? Take a breather. The second thing we can do is a glide. So in the glide, we're going to be slacking at one joint while we stretch at another, okay? And the easiest way to do this is to go into the upper limb neural tension test position for the median nerve, and then take the head and bring it towards your hand. Yep, and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I want you to bring your head the other, way, the other way. There you go. And let's go back and forth a few times, just like so. Very good. All right, so you can see we slack at one area and stretch at the other. Now, for a lot of folks that have cervical radiculopathy, usually they're not gonna to tolerate a lot of head movement. So what we can do is provide a glide of the arm without moving the neck whatsoever. And the way we do this, again, let's go into our maximal stretch position. If I go ahead and bend at the elbow, but maintain my extension at the wrist, I'm going to slack here, but stretch here. And I can flip it, and I can stretch here and slack here. So now I'm gliding the nerve as it moves back and forth without actually stretching, and I'm hopefully not provoking pain within the neck. Another great intervention for the median nerve is to take your patient's arm, point the finger out, and immediately push that like button on the video, and maybe subscribe to the channel as well. Next, we're gonna use some interventions to target the ulnar nerve right through this area. So this can be useful for patients that have cervical radiculopathy, but also for folks that have older nerve issues like cubital tunnel syndrome. To maximally stretch the ulnar nerve, we're going to depress the shoulder, abduct the shoulder, I'm going to pronate at the forearm, I'm gonna extend at the thumb and also at the fingers, and I'm going to flex the shoulder just like so, okay? 
So if I wanna glide this nerve, I can very easily go into our stretch position. And then from here, bring your ear a little bit closer, right? So we're slack the neck, stretching the arm. And I can flip it, right? So go ahead and take your head away and I'll straighten out the arm here. Fourth, gliding the nerve, okay? If I'd like to stretch it, I just do the opposite. So when I bring my hand towards your head, bring your head away. Big stretch and do the opposite. Head. Yep, and back. Yep, big old stretch. Good. Now, if I have a patient with a very irritated neck, and they don't really tolerate a lot of movement at the neck, I can actually just glide at the arm. So what I'll do here is I'll go into my stretch position, just like so. So if I take the hand, right, and I flip it, so if I go into supination and I flex at the wrist, I'm now slacked at the wrist, but I'm still stretched at the elbow. And I can flip it here, extend at the elbow, and flipping at the hand, okay? And then back and forth, just like so, right? A little bit funky, but once you try a few repetitions, it's not that hard to do. And now I've got a free guide for you today. It's an evidence-based cheat sheet to cervical radiculopathy. We go over all the fundamental basics for diagnosis and treatment of cervical radiculopathy. It's an eight page PDF, and I'll take you from a novice to an expert extremely quickly. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and download that right now and get learning. Next, we'll go over some interventions for the radial nerve. This is gonna be involved with cervical radiculopathy, but also for posterior interosseous nerve entrapment issues. So in order to maximally stretch, I'm gonna take the arm, I'm going to straighten out the elbow, I'm going to depress at the shoulder, I'm going to internally rotate at the shoulder. Go ahead and make a fist for me. From here, I'm trying to flex just like so. This should be a nice big stretch, usually felt in this portion of the forearm right through here, right? If I wanna intensify this stretch, I can just have Tiffany take her head, yep, and flex over to the other side. So take a breather for now. If I'm trying to stretch this, I can very easily just go back and forth just like so, right? If I wanna try to glide it, I can have, when I stretch your arm, bring your head towards me. Yep, so slack the neck, and then stretch the arm, and then we're flipping back and forth, right? If I have a patient that has a really irritated neck and I don't wanna mess around with stretching the neck and moving the neck around, I can still glide without actually affecting the neck. So what I'll do is as I start to extend and flex at the wrist, I will shrug up at the same time. Yep, and then I'll come back down, but I'll extend at the wrist, All right? Just like so, back and forth. This would be our glide for the radial nerve. Now you can also give these exercises for your patients to go home with. It's pretty easy to prescribe these. The first set of interventions we'll go on for is for the median nerve. So to maximally stretch the median nerve, again, we extend here. This is called a Spider-Man because obviously you can shoot a sling, right, right against the wall. So I extend and I take my head and I lateral flex to the side and I just go back and forth. Big stretch to the median nerve, okay? If I want to perform a glide, I do the same motion except when I shoot my web, I bring my ear down to my shoulder and I chase my head away as I bend back and forth. If I want a glide that doesn't affect the neck, I can very easily come here, then away. Back and forth just like so, so we're not messing with the neck. If I want a more aggressive stretch for the median nerve, let's have it come over here, Tara. I can put my hand up against the wall. I'm already feeling a pretty big pull, and then I can side bend away, back and forth. For the ulnar nerve, if I want to maximally stretch it, I go into this position. You may have seen this weird funky glasses, right? So in this position, especially if I side bend away here, I get a big old stretch in my ulnar nerve. So if I want my patients to really stretch the ulnar nerve, I can do this, okay? If I'm looking for a glide, I can easily take my head closer to my hand and then back and forth just like so, okay? If I don't wanna to try to move my neck back and forth because I have an irritated neck, then remember, this is the point of maximal stretch. If I flip like this and then I go back and forth, now you have a glide for the area. And last, here's some exercise ideas for the radial nerve. If I wanna stretch my radial nerve, I can take my head, side bend away, from here and make a fist, reach down towards my toes. I'm gonna to internally rotate the shoulder and I'm gonna flex the wrist. And I feel a big old stretch right through the outside of my forearm right through here in the radial nerve. So if I wanna stretch this, I can very easily back and forth, just do this. If I wanna to try to glide this, I can slack at the neck here, 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 back and forth. Now, if I have someone with an irritated neck and I don't wanna move their neck around, I can stretch in the arm and slack at the shoulder. And I flip back and forth, just like so. And that's my glide for the radial nerve. So how about sets and reps? So the amount of sets and reps used varies a lot across each study. And that's a bit of a problem, obviously, because we wanna know what's best. Unfortunately, I don't think we have all the answers for that. In the majority of these studies, usually they're performing some sort of neural stretch or neural glide two to three times per week, somewhere between one and three sets of 10. Oftentimes, this is also prescribed as part of the home exercise program, so folks are doing it up to seven days per week. Now, in terms of what I do, I usually prescribe it every single day of the week. That's what I like to do. 
The second piece is that a lot of folks will get relief from these exercises. So if that's the case, the patient feels really good when they do them, I'll have them do them more often. So maybe in the morning, lunchtime, and in the evening, maybe even more frequently if it feels really good. Usually I'm doing one, two sets around 10 to 15 reps. So now you have some great neural mobilization for folks that have cervical radiculopathy. You still need to know the best evidence-based exercises for folks that have this condition. I have a link for you. It's a video in the corner. I want you to go ahead and click on that and continue on with your learning.